All right. Hello, everyone. Happy Friday. Uh, looks like I've got sound from the microphone, so we look good on my end. If anybody is on either of the streams, let me know if there's any issues or anything with the, uh, the audio level or anything like that. We can adjust it as we go. Uh, beyond that, though, we'll shuffle a couple of these chat screens around. Uh, let me double check. Did I... Let me double check if I did the YouTube one. I don't want to forget to do the YouTube one again. Uh, thank you, Beata. Uh, heads up there in the YouTube chat, which I assume means that I did. I am actually still going to go back and double check. Okay. Yeah, we definitely... Definitely did start up the, uh, fire up the YouTube machine there. Okay. So let me just bring the chats back, back to the front here, hide some of this other stuff, and then we'll get the show on the road. Okay. There we are. And I got my screen up. Yes. Okay. So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Tim. I go by Foamy Guy on GitHub and Discord. This is the Deep Dive program. This is a weekly live stream program where we are uh, diving into the innards of CircuitPython. Sometimes we're working on the CircuitPython core. Sometimes we're working on CircuitPython libraries. Sometimes we're working on infrastructure surrounding the project. All sorts of different stuff. Just depends uh, on what's going on that particular week. But the uh, the common thread. Uh, is that it's all going to revolve around CircuitPython. If you are new, uh, for anybody that might not have seen this stream or anything like it before, um, and you don't know what I'm talking about, the, uh, the kind of high-level uh, version is that um, CircuitPython, which is what we're working on, this is an implementation of Python that runs on tiny computers called microcontrollers. Um, these tiny computers are able to execute that Python code and interact with other hardware that's connected to them. So if we... Uh, Click on over to the downloads page over here. We can see a bunch of different pictures of all these uh, different microcontrollers that support CircuitPython. There's all different shapes and sizes. There's all different capabilities. Um, they have you know different ways that you can connect stuff up to them. Uh, but again, the, the common thread here is that all these devices run CircuitPython, which means you can plug them into your computer. Uh, they'll show up like a thumb drive. Um, in the case of the ones with the USB ports, some of them will use web workflow or Bluetooth or other ways, but uh, the, the sort of stock standard way is uh, plug it in with USB. It'll show up like a thumb drive. You edit a, uh, a Python code file on that thumb drive, and that is just how you run your code. Once you save that, it will uh, restart the device and run your new um, version of the code file. So. Um, that's kind of a high-level look at CircuitPython. Um, this is the main website for the project, circuitpython.org. You can learn more about the project there. If you're interested in learning more or getting help with CircuitPython uh, hardware or software, um, uh, circuitpython.org is always going to be a good place to start. The other thing you can do is definitely come join us on the Discord. It is linked down below on the screen uh, somewhere down there, adafru.it slash Discord. You can also, if you do come to circuitpython.org, you can also just click on over uh, Discord right there. That will bring you uh, into the Discord also, uh, which actually in my case did just change my Discord to a different channel. So let me switch that back over. There we go. Um, can I restock the MacroPad starter kit? Very good question. Unfortunately, um, I do not have anything to do with stock or any physical hardware, so I cannot really... I can not only not really uh, put it back in stock for you, I can't even really offer any kind of insight about when it might be back. So uh, yeah, sorry about that, but um, totally separate totally separate from me. Uh, the best thing I could say is if you sign up for notifications on the product page, um, that's really the best thing you can do because you'll get the email uh, whenever it does come back in stock. But um, that's about the only thing I can tell you. So um, let me do... Uh, head on over to uh, Adafruit.com. Um, this is their website, Adafruit.com. Adafruit is a hardware and software company based out of New York in the United States, and Adafruit is the company that's paying the folks that work on CircuitPython. So uh, CircuitPython is an open source project. Um, you don't actually have to pay money to use it. You don't have to pay money to port it to your device or use it on your device. Um, it's totally open source, free to use, free to, to put on your device and then write code for. Um, but Adafruit is the company that's actually paying the folks who are uh, doing the development on it. So it's an open source project, but they're paying people to work on it and then publish 
um, that code into open source. So uh, if you like CircuitPython, if you use it for your projects, if you think it's a neat thing and you wanna see it continue to get better and move forward into the future, one of the ways you can help uh, do that is by just purchasing hardware from Adafruit. So uh, head over to adafruit.com Get yourself some toys to play with. Uh, they have the microcontrollers themselves, so the devices that run CircuitPython. They also have pretty much every kind of little electronic doodad that you could imagine to connect up to those microcontrollers uh, and interact with uh, with your CircuitPython code. So head over there, buy yourself some goodies. Uh, in particular, uh, I'll pull up some of the stuff we'll be working with today. Um, today I will be taking a look at the Pygamer microcontroller device, which is an all-in-one device that's like a little handheld gaming device. Uh, I also have an Edge Badge device, which is a very similar form factor, um, you know, kind of handheld gaming form factor type thing. This one's a little bit more rectangular and, and square edges and stuff, but it's a very similar form factor. I also have a couple others here. I don't know if Adafruit sells this one. The uh, Pico system, do they sell that? Yeah, they do, okay. Only one left in stock, though, so if anybody wants that one, you got to jump on it quick. That's another little gaming one. So as you could probably tell, today's topic, uh, we're going to be kind of diving into the world of handheld games just a little bit. Uh, let me catch up on the chat, though, before I do get uh, into that stuff. So how's it going, Dave Odessa? Uh, happy Friday. Thanks for uh, tuning in over there in the YouTube, as well as uh, C. Grover and Jose David over on uh, Discord. How's it going to you, too, as well? Um, so... Specifically, what I'd like to work on today is a, a system for writing a game for CircuitPython that can run on different hardware, um, but you hopefully not have to like write too much different code. Um, so for instance, the Pico system here, I want to be able to write a CircuitPython game that runs on the Pimeroni Pico system and takes input from you know the the d-pad there for the arrows and the a b x y buttons there i want my game to be able to make use of those inputs but i want the exact same game to also run on the pi gamer right totally different piece of hardware it has different buttons in this case only a and b right there's no x and y so it doesn't even have actually all of the same buttons um, but you know, it does have A and B and it does have a joystick, which kind of is a lot like a D pad, uh, but obviously, you know, different, different type of hardware, but you know, same type of input essentially. Um, so I want to be able to make a game that runs on these different microcontrollers, which all have their own different, uh, inputs available and not really have to worry about it in the code. In the code, I want to be able to just say, you know, up, down, left, right. Um, for the D-pad or the joystick, you know, A, B, if they exist, those will be the main two buttons. X and Y, you know, if they exist, then those are extra, you know, maybe start and select as well. Um, but ideally, I'd like a layer to abstract these things away so that we don't have to worry about it in our game code. Our game code should be able to just say, when the user presses the up arrow, you know, the up direction, then move their character up or whatever, right? We shouldn't have to care about the fact that on this device, the up is actually a joystick, but on this device, the up is actually a button. Whereas on another device, maybe it's a button, but it's connected to a shift register instead of directly on its own pin or whatever, right? All these different hardware configurations uh, can exist. We want a hardware agnostic layer that's gonna allow us to interact with that hardware uh, without having to actually micromanage which device it is, what pins is it on, is it analog or digital, is it a joystick or buttons, um, all this kind of stuff. Uh, today's multitasking during deep dive uh, is refactoring the Precision VCO Eurorack module, third revision, uh, hopefully the final. There we go. So it looks like it has a feather that rides along there. Um, and then I don't know the name of this little pinout thing, but the little 10 pin, it's like a debug pin in some situations, uh, debug connector. And so that's a Euro rack module, which will then have some inputs and outputs to, to um, essentially manipulate audio. Nice. Cool. Yeah. Just a little blink icon on that one. There we go. Okay. So uh, that's kind of the high level problem that we'd like to solve. And 
you know, there are actually a couple things in place that are sort of solutions to this problem, but none of them, yeah, it turns out none of them are kind of the one we want to we wanna go with for the long term. So I'll, I'll talk about some of the solutions that do exist. One of them is uh, not really intended for this purpose, but there is this library here called PyBadger. This is a badge-focused CircuitPython helper library. Um, so this runs on some of those pieces of hardware, like the PyGamer, the PyBadge, a um, couple other devices, and it's really meant for like making an easy to use uh, conference badge application. So, you know, hello, my name is whatever, right? Hello, my name is type of badge. And then you could press the button to cycle to another image, um, you know, play with some other stuff on there, right? Um, one of the things that this library has in it, though, is this idea of what we're talking about where it's hooking up to the hardware and giving us a common interface to actually interact with it. So let's see, keys and then buttons, which is a key state. And then it has a property called button. Uh, and button, you can call this property. And then on, on this property, you can actually access the different buttons. So you can say like, the example code is here, right? You could say like, if pybadger.button.a, this will be either true or false uh, based on whether or not that button is currently being pressed. Um, same thing for button B, start, select. You can also do the up, down, left, right. So this actually does have some parts of what we're after, um, but it has a bunch of stuff that's not actually what we're after. It has all of the actual like conference badge, you know, hello, my name is graphics, it has all of that stuff, which is really the primary focus of this library. It just happens to run on a few of these pieces of hardware, um, you know, kind of the same same deal where it runs across a couple of these different pieces of hardware and it makes them all behave the same. So it's got this functionality in it, but it's got a bunch of extra stuff that we don't necessarily want or need for the use case of games. Uh, the other one that I am aware of that solves this problem to an extent currently is in the core and it's part of the stage module. Oh, well, uh, let me see. You, I don't know the right breakdown. Maybe it's part of, of Ugame or Microgame rather than stage. Stage is the drawing bit of it. Is that right? Or do I have that wrong? Let's see here. Where's the buttons? It must not be here. Okay. Need four modules. U game. It's not there. Is it not U game? Pew pew. I think maybe it's in here. No? The matrix driver. Um, I swear there's one. Get a device plugged in here. Get to the REPL. Ooh, I had a bunch of projects. We don't really need this stuff. Tio. Yeah. No, it's not done yet. Hold on. Okay, yeah. You game. I don't why is it not showing up in the docs? I mean, I know this exists. I 
I guess, I mean, it's it's not a core module technically, but I mean, I know where the, I know I've seen the docs for it before. I don't know where it's from, I guess. There we go. Okay. Circuit Python stage. Ugame.buttons. This is another, again, attempt at the same thing, you know, solving the same problem. Uh, this is a... It's, it's not exactly a built-in module, actually. It turns out it's a bit trickier than that. It's actually a library, but it's a library that is frozen into pretty much every device. Um, so it behaves a lot like a built-in module, a core module, even though it is actually technically Python code, um, and I believe technically it's just a library um, that happens to be frozen in. Um, this one, though, also has its ups and downs. It's actually not the best that it's inside the core. It might be better if it was in a library so that the way that you install it is normal, um, the same way that you install other stuff, right, with circup or with copying it out of the bundle and everything. Um, and also it would be easier for people to add more devices to it collectively as a community if it were in its own library, I think. Um, whereas in the core here, it's kind of buried. You have to know, you have to know a lot about the CircuitPython project and how things get put together uh, when builds get made in order to kind of know where to go and change this at um inside there it's a it's a sub sub module they call that i think it's sub module inside of the core project so um it's in there but right now the thing is that you see this u game buttons this is the part that handles the buttons like i want to do but there's also u game display which is its own whole way for displaying stuff uh, separate from display I/O. It's its own whole display framework that works differently. And right now, these two are coupled. You can't use the buttons without the display. Uh, you used to be able to, but I think somewhere along the way, it stopped working that way. And now they're pretty much tied together to where if you use the buttons, it will initialize the display, which means then that you can't use the display for display IO. You're kind of stuck once you uh, once the display gets initialized here, you can no longer use display IO. So I want this button functionality decoupled from the display so that we can use it. Um, decoupled from like PyBadger as well, right? I don't want all the other stuff in PyBadger. So that's why we're kind of trying to tackle this, even though there are a couple of things that uh, either could work or have worked at certain times. Um, you know, none of them are necessarily ideal. So we're gonna try to make what will hopefully become ideal. So that's hopefully enough uh, jabbering away. If the idea is unclear at all, let me know. I'm happy to try to clarify further. Uh, but I think with that, I'm just gonna jump right in here and start getting dirty with some code. So I'm actually, I think going to, to start with, I think I'm going to do this the way that PyBadger does, which is kind of nice. Um, if we look at an example code, in your example code, you just do this import from Adafruit PyBadger, import PyBadger. Once you have imported this, you're able to start doing like pybadger.button. Um, in order to access the hardware you know, values, whether or not the buttons are pressed. Uh, in this particular example, it's also bringing the debouncer library into the mix. Uh, if we go back to like a more simple test type one, it won't have debouncer in it, but it will still do the uh, PyBadger button A and all that. How's it going, Nassim? Um, and it's actually really nice because the import works the exact same way on every single device and then the name for the buttons is the exact same on every single device so if you run this import on a pi gamer it will work and the buttons will show up as expected and if you run the exact same import on a uh, edge badge or a pi badge uh, same thing you know even though the hardware is technically different this import will actually work for both it will figure out which is which and it will import the right thing and the magic for making that happen is actually right here. So inside of init, it's basically just checking os.uname.machine. And 
then then it's just an if statement like if it is this device then load this thing if it's the other device then load this thing so um i want i think the exact same structure as this i believe so i am gonna i think just start on a device which in my case i happen to have the pi gamer device is the one that is uh, loaded up right now i don't know what this will end up being called for right now i think i'm just gonna say um i am just gonna say i think um game controller or game game controls game controls I do want a knit pie, and then to start with, I'm actually gonna make a pie gamer dot pie. So we're basically gonna use a very similar thing here. I think the code should switch to board dot board ID. I am certainly open to that. I don't necessarily know the uh, pros and cons or even differences or anything about it. Um, I will steal this one to start with. os.uname.machine gives us this name and then board ah okay gives us lowercase one so the statement will have to change but the um And these, I, this is guaranteed unique, right? This must be unique across all devices. Let's try one more just to make sure. I'm going to do the, uh, well, uh, we'll try a few more, actually. I've got a handful of devices here to try this on. Try the edge badge as well. Uh-oh. Maybe not. One doesn't seem to power on. It does have a switch, which I do trick myself with a lot. But I check the switch and it's, uh, seems like it's turned on. Marini Pico system. Marini Pico system. Nice. Uh, okay, that's the, the directory and the idea in circuitpython.org. Interested in seeing your approach? Did something similar for Pi Badge, Pi Portals, Featherwings, creating some classes with buttons, controllers, sounds, and displays. So I am focused just on controls now. Not not really worried about displays and sounds right now. Um, mostly, I, I like for displaying. I'm trying to get it to work with Display IO. Um, so I'm trying to just get the controls straightened out. But yeah, once we do have controls, it'd be it would be nice too to have a larger sort of game framework. Um, all of these types of things are things that are typically handled by a game framework. So. It would be nice to uh, to get to a point where we have one that kind of does a lot of that stuff for us. Oh, why did that close? Oh, because I unplugged it. It's unfortunate. I don't think I saved either, so I'm pretty sure we just lost. Not that I had written that much, but pretty sure we just lost whatever I had written. I wonder why the edge badge didn't turn on. Interesting. 
This one doesn't turn on either. That's awkward. Okay, now this is on. So, my USB hub has buttons for each plug in it, which are supposed to turn on and off the ability for that plug to work. However, the plug that I've been plugging these things in with is technically off, but some of them were working. So apparently off is a bit more like a suggestion. My badge, okay. How's it going, uh, Brian Gregory? Over there on the YouTube? There's a front view of the um, uh, Eurorack mount uh, module. Whatever was talking about before. So, yeah, unfortunately, we did. I did lose um, lose the code, so we're gonna have to try to be a little more careful. I guess I'll start. I guess I. I think I'm gonna start off of the devices. I'm gonna do it on on my PC, and then I'll copy it over. Game controls. Let's bring back our init. Guess we could just rewrite it. If board dot board ID uh, oops. And right now I have an edge badge which says pie badge as its one. And what we want to be doing is importing a thing from a file as something. So we will have one file for each type of device. So I'll make a PyGamer file. I'll make a PyBadge file. Start with those two. Once those are working, we'll move on to some others. Uh, inside of here, Well, let's get back to here first. Let's say from, how does it work? They have a dot there, interestingly. From dot pygamer import controls. Game controls, should we give it the full name? They could always do as. They say Pi Badger base, which comes from here. Guess we'll want that as well. We don't really have anything to extend. Yeah, and I don't know. I mean, eventually, like, we'll have buttons.
These, this one actually has a property that's called button, singular. Button.a, button.b. So ours would be game controls. Dot, do we want to keep that the same and just do dot button? So technically we also get to make some choices here as well. We don't like we can do it the same way as Pi Badger. We could do it the same way as U game, or we could also kind of shift it to some mix of whatever makes the most sense in the new way. Personally, I think I prefer Pi Badger as far as using properties to access the values. Whereas with uh, the U game one, you um, there's not an example of the code here, but you have to use a uh, bit bit shifting. I think bit shifting. You have to like get the value and then check if the shifted value is equal to something um, in order to find out if a button was pressed. Which is not too bad if you have done it or are good with Python and stuff. Oh yeah, there you go, with the and. Excuse me, not with the bit shifting, I guess, with whatever that is. Bitwise, maybe? Not sure. Um, I think properties, though, honestly, are probably easier for folks who are newer. So I think I like this bay better where it's just properties. Do we want to have it like this where it's game controls dot button dot a or do we want just controls dot button underscore a so the way this works is it calls update which on this device is a key states which actually comes from base There's key states. So this one's using keypad under the hood. So we do get to decide if we want to use, we, I mean, we get to decide pretty much everything. We get to decide if we do want to use keypad uh, or we could just drop back to digital IO. And if we go back to digital IO, then we actually don't have the problem that this class is solving, which is the fact that with keypad, it's not really storing the state. It's uh, giving you a way to access the events. So like when a key gets pressed, you can be notified by calling, you know, a property to check on it. But you can't really just say at any given time, like, is the A button pressed? Uh, no scratch recovery file. I think I closed it or something. Um, there sometimes are, but in this case, it it went away. Uh, it may still be in there somewhere. If I went and dug through temp files or somewhere, it may still be there, but it wasn't enough code to really worry about. I think I I'm I think I actually want to just switch back to digital I/O instead of keypad because if we just use digital I/O, then we actually don't need to have this whole class. So, game controls base. Does it not want this? Okay.
So another thing I would kind of like to avoid if we can... This is creating a tuple every time we call button. Which is, I'm sure, probably not the end of the world, but if we can write this in such a way where we don't create a new tuple every time it gets called, then I think we save a bit of RAM, probably. Or, or, or really what we save is, like, time that the GC will have to run. Because um, we'll, we'll use the RAM and then we'll throw the variable away and eventually it will get GC'd, but we'll have to GC more because we're using it to keep creating that tuple. If we can keep a, an object in memory and just use that object, I think we won't grow and therefore we won't trigger the GC. When using uh, PyCharm for CircuitPython, uh, can you run the code with it and print data to PyCharm? Uh, yeah, good question. So a uh, couple of things. Uh, I'll answer your question best as I can, but another thing I'll say that's really good if you're interested in PyCharm and CircuitPython is in the Welcome to CircuitPython guide, uh, there is a page called... Um, under Advanced Setup, there's a page called PyCharm and CircuitPython. I'll link this in the chat here for you. This page will, uh, I actually wrote this page and it explains uh, in detail exactly how I set up my PyCharm to work the way that it works. So this will help you get set up. Um, to answer your question more directly though, uh, yes. Um, so I, so currently the code that I'm writing, like this exact code right here, this is actually just code on my PC. It's not on the device yet, but what I have set up is I can see the device. So this is my CircuitPy, uh, drive for my device that's connected, which right now it's the Edge badge. If I scroll down on there and look inside CodePy, um, we can see the actual file, which in this case it is a radio mail CLI thing, which I probably have a backup of maybe. CLI Messenger. Let's compare that. So I'll go compare with CodePy. And they are actually, they are actually a little bit different, not by much. Couple typos fixed, different numbers, a print removed, a new line, a couple of changes. Anyway, I'll keep another back of, a, of it. So I'm gonna take CodePy, I'm gonna copy it as um, RFM mail CLI. Now I'm gonna go back to CodePy, can delete everything that's in here. We can go print hello deep dive. I'm gonna save it, I'm gonna do control S. Uh, the way you can tell visually is the asterisk here. So I'm gonna do control S. Uh, and then on my device, currently right now, I am in the REPL, so therefore when I saved, my code didn't run, but if I go control D inside of here, uh, now the code will run. So the printout, hello deep dive, now executed on the device that's connected, uh, printed this out, and it printed it into the serial. Whoa. I don't know what that was. It printed it into the uh, serial output, which I then have connected into this terminal window inside PyCharm. Um, specifically, I'm connected with a program called TO, which is a serial monitoring program. Um, so I get connected in there and then I can see all of the outputs from my program. I can also do control C to get to the REPL um, to test stuff out. So hopefully that answers the, uh, the question.
Um, and so, yeah, like I said uh, before, yep, I was... Originally, I was editing these files. These are on the PC, so eventually I'll move these over to the device, and then we'll be editing them live there as well. But I'm starting off here. That way I don't accidentally unplug it and then lose my work again. Um, eventually, we'll probably want to define in here, like, the property, but... I don't think I'm going to mess with it just yet. I'm actually going to go in here first and just say... How do we want to do this? We definitely need an init here. So inside of here, we're only ever going to be getting to here on the Pi badge. So in here, we just need to set up the digital IO stuff. Go circuit Python essentials. And out. So maybe the answer, I think the answer is different things. Like I think we have button A, button B, button up, button right, button left, rather than like button dot up, down, whatever. I think we have underscore. We have different variables, I think, is how I'm going to... That's how I'm thinking, at least, so far. So we basically want to set up the digital in out. We will set the direction to input. We'll set the pull. And actually, no, I guess... I mean, we could mimic what's in... Well, but this is keypad. Does it say the pull direction? Well, it's also on the shift register, I guess. Uh, is that on a shift register? I thought those, are they not just wired direct? We should update CircuitPython as well. Okay, yeah, no, those are on shift register. Button, clock, latch, out. Okay, so we don't need digital IO. We need, um, we need shift register stuff, which... That have one of those in here? Doesn't actually. This is making keypad.shift register keys. Is that the only isn't isn't is there a non keypad way to do shift registers? Only two matches, shift register keys. How did it work before? Is that a library? Something is like weird here, it's all dark. I can't scroll right.
This is being used as outputs. Is that actually how these are connected? So I actually thought these were just direct, but it turns out they're not. Okay, so we gotta, we'll have to see. I'm gonna try this library. Are any of these inputs? These are all outputs, it seems like. Can this do inputs? Okay, it has a digital in out, so I would assume it could do inputs. Maybe we'll also submit an example of inputs. It doesn't have one yet. So I am actually just going to try this in CodePy. Uh, so for the spy bus, we're going to use button clock and button out. Except it would be Misa, wouldn't it? Because we're going from the shift register, we're going out of the shift register and into the microcontroller. Microcontroller in S thing out. I don't know what the S stands for, serial? Latch pin is button latch by, I didn't know that was, a, is it tech? I didn't know that was a spy bus. Is that actually technically a spy bus? SR, import this. All right, we need to install a library. I am going to do it in style here. I could use circup. Or I could go download the uh, library bundle. Or, where's the thing I'm looking for? I think miso is a kind of soup. I believe you're right. Yeah, I think so. Disco tool circuit python manager, shout out to Neurodoc. What's the command to run it? NPM, uh, was that it, just NPM start? Yeah, I think it was, right? Oh. Vice, libraries, we want the sevens. Uh, I think it's this one, but I'm not sure. Seven four H C five nine five. Seven four H C five nine five, yeah. Install. Install. Bus device is technically built in to the core these days.
We don't really need to print this anymore. Let's also just go while true time.sleep. If pin one dot value. One high? Say so just pin one true. I don't really know if it's like high or low. Import that. Okay. I have no idea which one pin one would be, but let's give this a try. So I'm gonna save that. We are still in the REPL, so it's not gonna run. So I'm gonna control D. Invalid pins, line 10. Okay, so it does not, it does not actually spy bus, it seems like. Hmm. I mean, should we still do this? We should still do the actual ones? This, this is base. We'll test. My badge. Shift register keys. Clock data latch. Key count. Value when pressed. So this doesn't use the spy bus. Is there any way to, I mean, there has to be a way to read a shift register other than keypad, right? Is there not, there must be a way for me to read this with a different core module. Or, or, a, or a library, but it's not this one, it seems like. Unless if I did this wrong, should this actually be like that? I did change that. Invalid pens. Hmm, well, already trickier than I thought it was going to be, but that's how it goes sometimes. I mean, we could just use the keypad one, but then we have to have that whole key states class. If possible, I'd love to not need that. What was the old way? But the old way, I guess, was gamepad or something. Gamepad. Gamepad shift. I believe does not exist anymore. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay. Well, but we're also on an old version here. How do I set up terminal with screen or TO? The guy doesn't say. Um, I'll try to go back and add it, but all you do is, so terminal, that window is built into PyCharm. You should have access to that by default. You might need to go like view tool windows and find it in there and turn it on. Once you get it showing though, you just, um, you just run the command TO. So you have to get TO installed. I think I did that with either apt or maybe I downloaded it uh, via git and then installed it that way. I don't recall for certain. Once you get it installed, though, you just go TO, and then you point it to the TTY, which on my computer, 
uh, the first CircuitPython device I plug in always shows up as the exact same name here, TTYACM0. So what I tend to do is just go up enter because it just stays in my history in this terminal. So is gamepad shift still around? We could be updating also maybe. It says no documents, so I'm thinking not. So we might have to use keypad, I guess, which means we're going to have to have the states thing. I really thought, I'm surprised there's not a more general way to read the shift register. Yeah. Hmm. I'm really surprised there's no other way to read shit. I mean, I maybe I'm wrong, but I'm that does that that would surprise me if there are no other ways to read shift registers. I'm somehow broke the search again. Oh yeah, well, so we pretty much, so we got to use keypad, which means we have to have the states thing, or we have to change the API to not be kind of like property based, state based. So do we want, do we care? Do we want to have it be state-based, or do we want to just move it to be more event-based? I feel like state-based is easier for people who are new to programming to be able, it's, it's easier to convey the concept of like, you just ask it like, hey, is the A button pressed? And it will tell you true or false at any given time. And just when you ask it, it will check. And if it's true, it will tell you true. And if it's false, it will tell you false. Whereas keypad is actually not really state based. You can't just say at any given time, you know, hey, is the B button pressed right now or not? All you can say is like, hey, are there any events? If there are events, you can iterate through them and find out like, is one of the events a key press event? And if so, is it for the key number that corresponds with the A, a button? But you you only get the event that it that it has happened that it that it's in the process of happening rather than being able to say you know the state is the b button pressed currently
I think it's worth... I think it's worth bringing it over. I think the state... I think the way that it works with the state makes it... easier to understand for folks that are new. One thing is too, this could move out of PyBadger into game controls and then PyBadger could use game controls. Ease. Fair enough. Excuse me? So then we're going to be taking very much almost the same code from here. In that case. Initialize keys. Initialize key states. And we'll have a button property. So this actually, it's twofold actually. It creates a tuple here, but then it also creates a new one of these buttons class, which is a named tuple here. So it's making two tuples and one of them has names. Is there some way we can do that without having to create two tuples. This has pressed. We could keep a dictionary and just update it. Yeah, I think I like that. Might come up with a better name for it eventually. Is that creating a copy of the dictionary each time? If I return this at the end here? Is that creating a copy technically?
Gotta call it a day now. Thanks, Tim. Good night, all. Yep. Uh, take it easy, Dave Odessa. We'll see you next time. Have a good night. So this was going for I in range. How did it know the order of these? All the guide said was connect to your device using screen or TO, then you can see output to interact with it in the REPL. How would I get screen or TO and set it up on Windows? Um, unfortunately, I don't know how to do it on Windows. Um, yeah, sorry, I only really have experience using those things on Linux. On Windows, last time I used Windows, I did not use the same workflow. Um, I think TO is maybe not, I think it's Linux only. Or Linux and Mac, I should say. I think it doesn't work on Windows. It means you got to use something other than it. Really, what you need is a terminal-based serial program. Anybody else, if anybody else is in the chat that happens to know of one that works on Windows, definitely drop it in the chat. Um, Yeah, fortunately, all, all of my Windows knowledge is kind of outdated at this point. Real term, engineer terminal. See, the tricky bit is like you don't like like last time I did use Windows, I would have used something like Putty. Putty is its own whole terminal program. Really, what you want is like a command line program that you can run in an existing terminal. But I don't know. I don't know of one. So yeah, sorry. I, I unfortunately I can't offer you too much help there. I'll try to do some more research, but I cannot really promise that I'm going to come up with much. Um, I would encourage you to drop that question maybe in the help with Circuit Python room. Uh, in addition to like you got it in the YouTube here, but if you put it on the Discord in the help with Circuit Python room, um, you might have luck with somebody who's on Windows having some more insight into a good tool to use. I just don't know. Don't know what they are. How's it going? Love the factory over there in the uh, the land of the mountains. Um, let's see here. So, how does it know the order of these things? It's kind of interesting, right? It just, I guess, I mean, it's just hard coded to say B A start select right down up left happens to be the order of this one. How do you do? Link the Discord. Once you get in there, there's different channels, and one of the channels is help with CircuitPython, which is the perfect place for that kind of question. So this was EA start select.
right down up left. We have too many. We should only have, we should be zero through seven. Zero, one, two, three, four, we skipped five. Okay. So those should be in the right order for this device. They'll have to change for other devices. When we call update dict, we're basically just gonna go left out those how are we gonna do that so that's looping and it's just saying buttons dot was pressed I I don't know, we might not need these. I'm trying to think. I mean, a, a loop would be a concise way to do this, but perhaps, um, my gloves go, I'll be right back. Oh, they're right here, actually, nice. Um, loop would be a concise way to do it, but just writing them out would probably be easier to understand. Less magic numbery. So we'd basically just do this for each one of these. There's probably some way this could be a loop instead, but it's all right. I think it's like very easy to understand this way. It's like quite literal. It's doing what it's saying. Uh, the order doesn't really matter. Since we did the order up there in the correct order for this device, it doesn't really matter down here which order we do it in. Okay. So then this will update the key states object. It will then update the dictionary object. Why is this yellow unresolved? What? Oh, I see. Okay. Fair enough. We'll then call this. It will then return the dictionary, the current state of the dictionary. Okay, I think we're almost possibly usable at this point. So I'm gonna take this, put it inside lib here, and I'm gonna start writing CodePy to try to use it. So to start with, we're just gonna say import game controls. No, for, we want from, from game controls, import game controls. 
which would then import from the specific one of these that it found. which actually needs to be declared here. That. So this defines the class and then initializes an instance of the class in this variable called game controls, which is what will get imported here. And in turn, what will get imported here import. Um, I don't know. I gotta run to the restroom, though. So I'll BRB. Sorry. Not import. That's such a generic, generic error. Can I import name? Like this is basically the same. Let's make sure this is working. I guess print running on pi badge. Did we get that printed? For one thing, we're still. I'm editing the one on the PC. Do close all.
Maybe I had my if statement broken on that one. Typing. So they're not on self, technically. They're also not visible this way. They need to be outside of this, or? Okay. Control R for replace. Oh, unfortunately, we have a bunch of extras, actually. That's not very helpful, is it? Oh, well. Okay. Got running on PyBadge. It's not spamming. The terminal already. Why are these crossed out? Oh, because I excluded them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So theoretically, if I start pressing buttons, you appear to have lost Discord. Oh, you're right. I must have shifted the... Uh... Ah, that's annoying. Hmm. There we go. I don't know how long ago that was, but be back there now. Thanks for the heads up there. Who was that, by the way? I appreciate that. Um, Yada over on YouTube. Yeah, I appreciate the heads up. Any anytime anybody sees if anything is wonky or if the uh, chats stop working, if they're not scrolling, if they disappear, uh, feel free to let me know on whatever channel happens to be convenient so definitely appreciated so i will i don't have the camera loaded up yet but i'll get that just so we can at least kind of all enjoy the moment of truth together if it does actually work out for us which maybe it will maybe it won't it's always part of the fun Okay. Edge badge. So theoretically, if we start pressing buttons, we should be seeing some things get printed. We're lucky and we did everything right. Uh, there's no debouncing, so it is probably just gonna spam. Nice. 
Nice. Uh, start select. Okay, sweet. So all of those are working. That is kind of the core structure of the library. Each device will have its own one of these files. We have PyBadge, we have PyGamer. They'll all extend from base and they will all provide a dot button property and that property will return the same type of object. So in our case, a dictionary. Um, but the different implementations inside of init and update, well, inside a button really, uh, and init, those will be different for each device. So did I actually edit these? I don't remember now. So what I'm gonna do is just take a copy of that stuff back, paste it there, overwrite these. So now we've got the latest version in both places. I'm gonna do the Pygamer one, which is actually gonna start as a copy of this, except we'll change Py gamer game controls and then we will need to go look at how it works also this we should erase it because the docs are not correct anymore this works differently it's not button dot a or b it's now a dictionary so you need to access it by a key which is a string erase those for now We'll do that, and I think this one, does it have a shift register also? It does. But it doesn't have as many buttons on it. It, it only has A, B, start, select, it does not have the D-pad because instead it has a joystick. So the start of our setup is gonna be the same, but then our joystick is gonna be a bit different. that joystick oh um i guess we can add that i wonder if i can like oh okay i wonder if i can tell my pie charm to always wrap that in try catch somehow that I mean I will say if we are trying to avoid creating tuples this is not the best because this will just create a tuple maybe let's just do it this way let's copy these let's go here with them Let's take that out. So this is all part of update, essentially. These three things are about updating the actual, like, getting new data from the hardware, and then this one is about updating our dictionary to have the correct states. Right. We would actually need to get those inside of here, I guess.
Um, I got the whole thing. Have commas. Okay. Theoretically, that should work. Um, we are back on the PC, so I'm going to unplug the Pi Game, no, the uh, Pi Badge. We're going to plug in the Pi Gamer. You know what would have been nice though is if I could have kept the script from the Pi Badge. Yeah, so I'm actually going to unplug it back again. And I'm actually just going to copy this and go inside of here and paste it and call it simple test for right now. And eventually we'll make a full repo, we'll have an examples folder, we'll have the correctly named simple test, all of that stuff will happen eventually, but to start with I'm just going to do it this way. Let's refresh here. No module named game controls. Okay, so I'm gonna close these. I'm gonna open the code on the device. Ah, we have the original one, which has files but no code. So this was the one that I unplugged and we lost the uh, code from initially. So I'm actually just gonna delete that. And we're going to take the latest copy of this here. Drop it into lib. We don't have a printout for Pygamer, but it didn't crash, so that's a good sign. A button, B button, start, select. So we actually lucked out on the order of those as well. Theoretically, we might have needed to change those, but in this case, it turns out we didn't. Uh, the real question on this one is the joystick. So I'm gonna go up, nice, uh, right, okay, down, and left. And then theoretically, like diagonal, we should be able to get like upright, upright like that, which we do. So that should work as well. All of those are looking good. High gamer's good to go. We did not actually edit the code any, so the version that is on the PC is still good. Up to date, I should say. So, next device, Primaroni Pico system. Pico system. Import board, board dot board ID.
Could it be Pimeroni Pico system? Do we think we could ever run into a situation where there's a different Pico system? How's it going? Uh, McQuinnman16. Hi, y'all from YouTube and Discord. How's it going, my friend? Thanks for uh, tuning in, hanging out in the chat here. So on this one, we have what? We have SW down, left, right, up, SWX, SWY, SWA, SWB. So in this case, on this device, uh, it looks like it's not on a shift register. Instead, there's just eight individual IO pins. Uh, four of them are A, B, X, Y. Four of them are up, down, left, right. And on this device, there actually is no start and select. So those would not exist here. So one question that we do get to consider at this point is... What do we do? How do we want to treat it in situations where the buttons don't actually match up? Theoretically, we could probably take that down to four on the Pi Gamer as well. It seemed to work. But technically, I think there should only be four on the gamer since the uh, joystick is analogs. Um, Pico system. I think it's worth considering how to treat the differences, like because this one has X and Y, but no start and select. Do we add X and Y to the dictionary? Do we just reuse start and select, even though that's not how they're labeled? I don't think I like that idea. So I think we add X and Y to the dictionary and it's just up to the user to kind of check like, if the board has a start button, then you can pull it. Otherwise you could try a different button maybe. I think D-pad and A and B. I think those should be the buttons that we strive to have implemented on every single device that uses this library. D-pad A and B, X, Y, start, select are like more on the optional side. So this one's not connected with a shift register. It's actually just connected straight up. So we may as well still use keypad though. Um, Theoretically, we could just use digital I.O., which is how I had thought about doing it originally. And we could still do that, but we already have to have the key states thing. Like my main motivation for wanting to do it that way was to not need the key states thing. Since we're going to need the key states thing either way, like I'm just leaning towards using keypad here as well. I basically want something like this. Let's put it out here, I guess. Depends. Drupal. And we'll try to keep it, I guess, in the same... Same order? Order as we have up here, I guess, so... SWB was the name on 
this one, SWA. We don't actually have start and select, so that's where it gets weird though, I guess, yeah, because these would be, they don't exist, so then I guess we get to, I guess that's where we would put our X and Y then. Don't know that it necessarily makes more sense one way or the other as far as which one comes first, but we'll go X, Y, and then um, write down up left. Are you impressed? Pull. I don't know about the pull. Theoretically, I think that should work. Ah, okay, so these are just constantly tripping everything. Probably that means that we have the wrong value for this. Nope, that's still spamming. Too impressed. All right, that stopped spamming at least, so don't know if it'll work, but up in the right direction, I suppose. <laughs> A button, E button, select button. Wait, what we want. Uh... Right, so we actually, yeah, uh, I pushed the Y button, you got select, and the X button says start. A, B, Y, X, down, left, up, right.
So that is good. We did have to change the code a little bit, so I'm going to copy it back. Way we get the updated one with X and Y instead. Somehow we got this back, even though I deleted that, I thought, in both of them. that there so that it's actually I must have saved it on the device uh, okay ecosystem is good the other device that I have here to try and implement is pew pew m4 which I think pretty similar to the Pico system in that I believe it has all the pins we have a much much, much, much older version. Although I, it doesn't have a reset button. Hey, whoa, jeez, you guys see that? I don't know if he came through in the video, but Cat totally just jumped up basically like to my shoulder, essentially. He jumped up to the top of my chair here. Um. Yeah, where was I? Okay, so it's much older. I'd have to use a wire, though, because it doesn't have a reset button. I'm actually just going to leave it for now. So, yeah, yeah, button down, button left, button right, button up. And then it doesn't call them A, B, X, Y. It calls them O, X, and Z. And I think what we'll do is we will try to keep the same order that the PyBadge library did. Which is using O as B. And X as A. This one pretty much will just be a copy of Pico system. There's no board ID. It's too old. We have to update it. All right. So I need a wire. At least one wire. We could probably get by with one wire. This one's tricky. Show this. Kind of tough. We pretty much just have to like. Oh wow! I cannot believe that worked. I'm pretty sure you have to double tap that, and I don't think I did intentionally. I double tap it, so I am beyond surprised that we just got to the bootloader on the first try right there, but not going to complain. Usually that is a uh, much more involved process for me on this device. Here we go. Oh, still disconnected. I wonder if it came back as TTYACM1. Or just like not at all. Like it's gone altogether. CircuitPy. Hmm. 
it doing stuff? It's like still partially there. Hmm. I'm going to reboot it. I think this will work, right? Really? Um, well, I don't know why we would not have a serial port. I mean, it was connected before. We had an even older, I forget what version it said, but I, th I think it was 700 something. So is this like just a thing where newer ones have a broken serial or? Can you double tap with the switch here? Is that? No, I can't go fast enough for that. There's no way. I don't know if it works that way anyway, honestly. No, didn't get it that time. Or that time. Or that time. This is more like what I'm used to on this one. I'm like bending my pin here as well on my wire. It's not very good at getting to bootloader on this one. Oh, but I can't get the serial. I was going to say, isn't there a command in REPL to get to bootloader, but if I can't get the serial, that doesn't help me. All right, we got it. I am very confused that that's just gone now. Not updated. I copy the wrong one. Come 
That's where I copied 733. Yeah, I did copy 733 because I rebooted and now it's got 733. Just didn't reboot, I guess. But it's still not connected here. Hi, we're going poll. Uh, SK, happy Friday. Um, well, we have kind of uh, ground this one to a screeching halt, haven't we? I mean, I need... I pretty much need to be able to get to cereal. If I can't get to cereal, it makes the whole rest of this a lot... heck of a lot harder, because... Without being able to get to serial, I can't see the printouts from the test script to know if it's working. And I can't get to REPL to look at the output of like dir board and board.boardid. But I'm very confused because like we had a serial connection before. I did dir board. That's how we found the name of the pins. Here, we, we definitely had a serial connection here. But I updated CircuitPython, and then we never got it back after that. We were on 700 Alpha 5, which is very, very old, but... Let's try it again. I need to wire a button in here. Oh, wow. Second try that time. Not too bad. Seven O O. How's it going, DJ Devin? Seven O O. Uh. So, somewhere between 700 and 733, the serial port stopped working on this device. Feels very, very weird, if I'm honest, but let's download a few more. So, we'll spend the last few minutes of the stream here trying to see if we can tell at least the major version where this stopped working. Unfortunately, that means we get to play more of Can Tim Get to Bootloader. Maybe not the funnest game, but... Ooh, getting better. Can't believe I got it on the first try the first time. Let's do 710 next. It's gone. So between 700 and 710, which are basically these. Well, except for the two, there's a two alpha in there. So beta zero, beta one, beta two, beta three, and then RC zero, RC one. 
Check beta zero. I'm only gonna check one or two more of these and then I think I'll sign out for the night. So if anybody's got any other questions or comments or anything, definitely now's the time to try to get those in the Discord. Or the YouTube chat, somewhere in the chat that I can see. Ooh, we got it first try again. Um, for anybody interested, I will be back in the morning tomorrow. Tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, I'll be back streaming again uh, over on my own channel. Guy underscore Twitch. I will post links uh, in the live broadcast chat in the morning when I'm getting ready to start. So if you want to watch on YouTube, you can just watch for those links because the YouTube link changes each time. I don't pre-schedule it, so I can't give out the link ahead of time. Device agnostic game control sounds perfect. Nice. Ooh, that's interesting. Now we got stuck on Blinka. I wonder if it's... Did it not reboot all the way? I think it didn't reboot all the way. Um, I probably will work on this a little bit tomorrow as well as maybe some other stuff too in the pipeline like uh, getting back into bitmap tools i implemented a few more of the bitmap tools functions that i worked on last week on this stream did i do that on this stream i think so now i don't now i don't recall for sure but definitely last week it was either on the deep dive stream or on the saturday morning stream i worked on bitmap tools i did implement a few more of those off stream uh last night i think it was i was working on that we have just the harder ones are left, so I may try to tackle one of those on the stream tomorrow, but I also want to work on this some more. 710. Didn't I... Seven one oh beta 0. Okay, now that is right. 710 beta 0. And it does show up. Of course it does. I have a few more to try here. Beta 1. This again. I should say shout out to... I think Toddbot? I'm pretty sure Toddbot is who made this Asteroids game, if I recall right. I, if I'm incorrect, then I do apologize. I hope I got that right. But I want to say that was a Toddbot creation from a couple of months back. Toddbot released it, and then uh, I tweaked the code ever so slightly just to get it to work on this device. Now we're, like, stuck. Okay. 